This is part one of a three-part review of the Byte CH9720CU electronic load. I bought and paid for this Byte load in March 2021 with my own funds to use in my home lab and in the future YouTube videos. I received no compensation of any kind for this review, nor did I give Byte any prior notice of this review. A large part of my motivation for doing this review was to help me understand the capabilities and limitations of this instrument so I can deploy it intelligently in future tests. This is the first commercial electronic load I have used. I have zero experience with other models or brands. Please leave your experience with other models and or brands in the comments. So let's first look at the hardware and firmware version I'm reviewing here. This is a screen capture because um, in the future they may update the firmware and uh, will operate differently. Let's test the boot up time and the power consumption of this bike load. One thing I like, it's got a real power switch, not a standby switch. So as soon as it hits 55, well, let's make that uh, six, uh, 60 seconds. I'll turn it on. Under five second boot up. That's uh, very good. And now let's look. It's consuming 10.1 watts with a power factor of 0.86. So this is the operational area of the load. It's limited to 300 watts maximum and 360 volts maximum. So at the maximum voltage and maximum power, the maximum current allowed at that point is 833 milliamps. It's also limited to a maximum current of 30 amps. So at the maximum power and maximum current, the highest voltage you can get is 10 volts. There's a short circuit resistance in the short mode of about 62.1 milliohms. So at 30 amps, that means the smallest voltage you could possibly uh, measure with this would be 1.87 volts. Now, in emails to me, Byte claims this unit has an isolation voltage rating of 1,000 volts, where the isolation voltage is the voltage above or below ground you can operate it. I will discuss this more in Part 3 after I've done the hardware teardown. So these are the specifications that... Uh, Byte issues for this load. They look pretty good at first glance, but let's take a look here where we have all these full scale uh, uh, numbers. So here, this is, let's say here, the rated voltage mode, I can set it to 0.05% within 0.05%, plus or minus 0.03% full scale. Well, let's translate this into absolute values. Well, when you translate the full scale into absolute values, yeah, these numbers are pretty big compared to the resolution of the settings. Now, this is just pretty typical for a manufacturer. They want their uh, specifications to be as wide as possible and still have customers accept them so they can more, get more units through the production line successfully. Um, however, in my experience, the readings are much better than uh, what these uh, settings say. The settings I have observed and measured are much better than the specified accuracy and appear to be completely monotonic. And the voltage measurements are as accurate or better than any handheld meter I own. All of the measurements I've checked are much better than the specification limits. Here's a quick demo of the voltage measurement of the beach load. Um, I've yet to find a condition where it has not met its published voltage and current measurement specs. I'm using a PDVS2 Mini by Ian Johnston as a reference. It's set to zero volts right now. One volt. Two volts. 
three volts. Four. Five. Six. Seven. Eight. Nine. Ten. So right now I have the byte load hooked up to my high voltage power supply. This, cur this meter and this meter are monitoring current. This meter here is monitoring the voltage output of the power supply. And right now I have the byte load set up uh, to draw 15 milliamps and it's and it's on and so it says unregulated here because at the moment it can't get 15 milliamps out of the power supply because it's turned off so let me turn it on okay it says it's drawing 15 milliamps but both these meters say it's drawing 16 and a quarter milliamps this meter is reading uh 356.7 356.7 that's good so let's turn the load off now it says it's drawing zero but both these meters say it's drawing about a milliamp and a half the reason it's doing that is the input impedance of the voltmeter of this or the, of this uh, uh, unit when it's turned off is specified to be 200k or greater so for 360 volts one and a half milliamps that's around 300k, so that's greater than 200k, but that makes sense given the specs. I have the byte load in the low current range, 0 to 3 amps, and I'm monitoring current both with this Keithley 2700 and the 121GW. Um, and I'm on the low range because the Keithley's current limit is 3 amps. So notice here, I turn it off and on. There's a little bit of leakage current when it's on and set to zero, but it's uh, about 100 microamps. Let me put this on auto range. Yeah, so 130 microamps. So now 100 microamps, 200 microamps. 500 microamps um, it's putting out uh, the, the outputs changing even though the meters not reading it 600 microamps it's starting to read so there's one milliamp two milliamps five milliamps ten milliamps 20 milliamps, 50 milliamps, 100 milliamps, 200 milliamps, 500 milliamps, 1 amp, 2 amps, 3 amps. So there's quite a few modes of operation for this load. It has the basic uh, modes you'd expect of any load, a constant current mode, a constant voltage mode, a constant resistance mode, and a constant power mode. It also has a short mode in which it uh, goes to a hard short and measures current and voltage. It has an LED simulation mode, which is very uh, cool, and I'll talk about it some more. It does a battery discharge test in which it can do one to three currents or constant resistance. It has a transient mode in which it slews between two currents. And then it has some extended modes. It has a scan test which sweeps voltage or current. And this is very cool. 
It has a couple modes here. I'm not sure what they're doing. Maybe some customer requested this. It goes into constant current, tries to go into constant current mode, or if it can't, it goes to constant voltage mode. Here it tries to go into constant resistance mode. If it can't, it goes to constant voltage mode. It has a list mode in which you can sequence the sta the four standard uh, tests with pass fail limits. This uh, looks like it's for a production environment. It's got a file list mode in which you can save all the instrument settings um, and recall them. It's got 100 internal memories and you can save an additional 450 settings to the USB drive, and then it's got a firmware update mode. So now I have to load in constant current mode. I turn it on, and it's set for 5 amps, but the power supply is turned off. Turn it on, and it dra just draws 5 amps out of the power supply. Works well. Turn it off, back on. I can vary this current up and down. That works fine. Now watch what happens when I turn the current output down on the power supply. The power supply has just gone into current limiting mode. And now this says unregulated instead of in constant current mode. But if I bring this back up to where it can put out 5 amps, this locks back on. That's great. Now let's, uh, let's try a uh, constant, res let's turn this off and let's go to uh, a constant power mode. I have it set for 20 watts and we turn it on. And it's drawing about one amp at 20 volts. Turn the power supply off, turn it back on that works off doesn't work that time so it doesn't like to stop and start all the time in constant power mode but I can do this and turn it back off and on so let's turn that mode off and let's go to constant resistance mode enter and start it and we're at 1.3 ohms and the power supply is in constant current mode right now. So the, the power supply is current limited. Turn that off, back on. You can see whenever I turn it off, it goes to unregulated, but it comes back. Now let me, uh, let's turn this resistance up to, so. Okay, so now the power supply is in uh, co in constant voltage mode. We'll turn it off, back on, off, back on. And that seems to be working fine. I'm turning the current output down on the power supply and it's staying locked, come back up. So the constant resistance mode appears to work fine. Now let's put this in short mode because I want to turn that on. Okay, because now what I want to do is I want to set the output of the, I've sh this essentially is a hard short. And right now it's measuring 0.8 volts out here. Let's turn this off, enter. Let's turn the remote sensing off so it's sensing internally. Short, 0.34. So this is actually a measure of the internal resistance of the load. Anyway, I want to adjust it since it's, I could use it in short mode to set the current output of this power supply. And let's set that down to five amps. Okay, that's about as close as I could get. So we'll turn that off. So the power supply is set for 20 volts and five amps. But let's drop this down to, oh, 
11 volts. And now we'll go to uh, LED mode. Okay, so in LED mode, I enter a voltage and a current and a coefficient. I have a slide that will explain how this works. And here's the voltage. And it's displaying the, uh, this 5 ohms is derived from these inputs and it determines how, how the power supply operates. So now if I turn this on, I can vary the voltage down. And when we get to 10 volts, Oops. It should be 10 milliamps because that's what I have set over here. If I go much below that, it'll drop to zero. If I go too far below, it's, uh, it's doing something funky. So it really doesn't want to go much below the set point, whatever that Q point is, but it works just fine up above. Now I could turn the power supply off and on, and this still works. Now this point, this one here, I'm not sure what that is. Peak current when it turns on or something. I really have not figured that out. So let's talk about the LED mode. So here I have a, a uh, reel of uh, LED tape. And over here on the right, you can see I have an IV curve of this of the LED tape and you can see it's, uh, it's essentially zero volts or zero current until it reaches a turn on voltage essentially the turn on voltage of the four diodes that are in series in each section then it comes up and it's almost a straight line so it looks like you could almost model this with a fixed voltage and a resistor So that's essentially what this LED mode does. It, uh, it will operate over here in this, uh, along this red line. And so when you, you turn it on, it's essentially modeling the, uh, an LED a load for an LED uh, power supply. You can go slightly below the uh, intercept here, but much below it, it loses it, but it works just fine up above. Now, the user inputs are these three coefficients here. You put in V0 and I0, which uh, is some Q point you want the line to go through down here, and then LED coefficient. And then the, that, LED, that coefficient in V0 and I0 are used to compute this resistance, which is 1 over the slope of this load line. When it turns on, it has these three measured values, and it also comes up with this number, which I think is some sort of peak current it turn on. That's not documented, so I'm really not sure what's going on there. Now this is the system setup menu. This is, to get to this menu, you hit the set key on the keypad. And there's a lot of stuff going on here. This is how you get to all the sub menus. Let's look across the top first. When this uh, is lit up here, when, or when this is on, it's in remote uh, voltage sense mode. This is the heat sink temperature, and it, this displays all the time. And I think this is a really cool uh, feature that more instruments ought to have. The only thing I don't like is it controls the fan and the fan turns on high whenever the temperature is 25 C or higher. I wish that temperature was set a bit higher. This icon here shows that there's a USB drive inserted. So now let's look at the menus. First there's the load setup menu that lets you turn on and off the remote sensing. Uh, the higher low settings for the current and voltage set ranges, the maximum pow voltage, power, and current, slew rates, on and off voltages. We'll talk about this more in another uh, menu. Number two are test limits. We'll talk about this some more. Three, user interface commands, time, uh, time and day, data save interval. We'll talk about this some more. File list. This is really quite cool. 
It allows you to save all the internal settings of the the uh, load for all modes. It has 100 internal memories you can use, and you can save an additional 450 on a USB drive for high 550 setting saves. This is a then there's a battery test uh, setup mode for uh, setting up the battery discharge test. A transient test. We'll talk about this some more. List test. Um, this um, uh, executes a, a series of uh, tests in the list for uh, production use. Um, not terribly useful to me. Um, but uh, if you download the manual, it actually talks about this quite a bit. Scan test. This isn't in the manual. It appears to be something new. And the only way to get to this test is through this menu. It's not on the regular test set yet. But it's, this is very cool, and I really like this feature. This is the LED simulation test setup. System info. There's a calibration screen, and it, you can't do anything. It just asks for a password and then a way to update the firmware. So if we look at the load setup, now this is one of the sub-menus on there, or the first one. So this, this one allows us to turn on remote sensing. Um, this is current range, with the, or the, the range we can set the load in. It's got two different ranges with uh, different resolutions. And same with voltages. You can go to, when you go to the higher voltage range, you lose a little bit of resolution. Okay, the load turns on. Okay, these are on and off uh, uh, voltages to automatically make the to load turn on when this voltage is ex equal to or exceeded or turn off. Um, this allows uh, you to set <coughs> constant current or constant voltage mode regulation for the constant resistance mode where constant current is the default and um, I suppose you'd want to use constant voltage if you're testing a current source but I haven't played with it yet I've just left it in constant current mode um, this is test speed how fast the readings update I've just left it on fast this auto off mode is really um, a mode where the pa where the load will disable itself after a set time of being on. You put input zero to get it, turn it off. I haven't used this mode. Now these three things here, maximum current, maximum voltage, and maximum power, are absolute limits <coughs> for the load. And if these values are exceeded, the load... Uh, will shut down and give you an error message. These are the turn on and turn on slew rates. And this controls whether it displays limits or uh, the maximum uh, values during in the display. So I'll have some examples of this. So I have the on voltage set to five volts and the off voltage set to two volts. Now let's go to this mode and uh, I'm going, it's measuring voltage coming out of the power supply. Watch me as I turn it up. When it gets to five volts, the current comes on. When I drop below two volts, it turns off. Okay, so now notice I have in the load menu the maximum power set to 5 watts. So if I start the current test, it's working. And as I turn the voltage up, you can see the power rise. It got to over 5 watts, and it uh, gave me an error message and turned the unit off. And I could go back down. It's going to stay off now until uh, I reset it. I have the bytes load set to maximum display mode now. And I'm going to turn it on. And it's in constant current mode. Now watch as I vary the power up. 
or the voltage up, you see that the maximum value of voltage and current stays. And as I turn it back down, it will hold the maximum value. And it will stay there until you turn it off. So this is the system setup menu. This one, you can choose a color theme, red or violet. Choose a language. Currently, only English or Chinese is available. Uh, this is the the power on mode. It can either de go back to a default mode or the last use settings. I like it in the last use settings, so it comes back on right where I left it. Uh, you can turn a key click sound on, and I actually kind of like the sound. It's not uh, horrible. Okay. Uh, these are uh, control locks, I assume, for production use and my spelling error. D uh, date and time setting. Um, this here determines how the load is enabled. Manuals for the front panel. External is a logic level on the rear connector. And bus enables and disables it with an RS-232 command. Uh, this is the COM mode. It uses RS-232, or it has a USB mode, which utilizes uh, some software that's in Chinese and a uh, serial to USB converter. Um, it's possible to hook these up in RS-232 mode in parallel, and if it's in that mode, hooked up like that you can you can assign each one an address here's the baud rates you can use this is where you set up single or multiple units on the rs232 this is the default uh, set mode for over here you can either set it for a factory reset as a default or a stored user profile and this is the acquisition frequency here, where and this controls the the rate at which data is written to an external USB drive when you're recording data, and you can vary it from 0.1 seconds to 10 seconds in uh, 0.1 second steps. These are the two color themes: red's the default, but violet's available if you like more colorful numbers. Now this is the pass-fail test uh, setup, and these display on the screen if you're not in the in the maximum mode all the time. But um, not all the time. And but you can set up limits here, and then over here you can turn on whether the, these limits are used to determine whether something passes or fails. If it does pass or fail, you can either leave the beeper off or have it beep on pass or beep on fail. And you can uh, turn the limit display off if you're not using it. And it really doesn't turn it off. It just shows out zero for all the values. Anyway, it will show a green pass or a red fail based on these limits, but it has no effect on the load operation except that the pass and fail logic signals on the rear connector will change. If the load loses lock, it will not show pass or fail. I have the limit file set up. Now watch what happens as I vary the power supply. I'm going to vary the voltage of the power supply. Up. I'm going to vary it back down. Come back up into this region. Now let's change the current level. Okay, the equipment I'm using on this test is a Harrison 6823 power supply. It's basically a uh, power a power amplifier, and it's being driven by my Siglent uh, SDG 2042X function generator. The output of the Harrison power supply is going into the Beach or Beach electronic load, and uh, I have three current monitors on it. I have a passive current monitor being fed to the 
channel 3 on the scope, which is blue, a tektronics current probe, which is going to channel 4, which is green, and then the voltage coming out of the uh, power supply is going into directly into the scope into the uh, channel 1, which is yellow. And I'm also monitoring the current uh, with my Unity UT210E uh, current meter. The green trace is the Tektronix current probe. It's set for 100 milliamps per division. The blue trace is the passive current probe. It's set for 20 milliamps per division. And the yellow trace is the voltage coming out of the Harrison power supply. That's 10 milliamps, I mean 10 volts per division. And so now I'm going to turn the function generator on and we can see the uh, voltage on the Harrison power supply is putting out a 500 hertz uh, triangle wave that's going between 5 and 10 volts. Now we can see that there's a uh, square wave on both the active and passive current probes and that square wave is due to a 2 microfarad capacitor on the out input of the electronic load. Now I have the uh, load set for 300 milliamps, so if I turn it on, we'll see the green trace shift up. And now we see noise on both the green trace and the blue trace. And that noise is actually coming from the, uh, the current uh, that the uh, electronic load is drawing. So let's talk about how I actually found the, what the capacitor was on the output, uh, on the input of the load. So let's look at this. The polarity of the passive current probe is flipped from the Tektronix probe because I had it hooked up backwards. That's pilot error. And the ringing you see in the current signal is nothing to do with the load. That has to do with current slewing in the power amplifier or power supply that's driving the load. And this waveform you get is has nothing to do with whether the load is turned on or off. If the load is unpowered or turned on but disabled, I get the same waveforms. So let's start with the fundamental equation, which is Q equals CV. This is something you should know, kind of like Ohm's law. If you differentiate that with respect to time, you get this equation. And dQ dt is the current. And well, you're going to assume that the capacitor doesn't vary with time, so we can say that term is zero. And so we get I equals C dV dt. However, since the uh, voltage is varying linearly over a fixed time, we can change that to I equals C to delta V over delta T. And now we would just rearrange the, sh the equation. And now we can say the I is half the peak-to-peak -peak value because the waveform is symmetrical. Vol the voltage is just the, the voltage from the, between the two peaks. And the time is one there. So we insert that all into the equation, and that's how I got two microfarads. Now let's talk about the noise and the load. There's switching noise in the current in the, the beach load draws. It seems to be worse around one amp in comparison to the magnitude of the current being drawn. It seems to have no effect on the DC readings or average current on the values measured by the load or on the values measured by external meters. The current noise is concerning if you're using the load to make a, a noise or indoor ripple measurements of a power supply since it may contribute to the values you measure. The following examples are at pr approximately the worst case current. Okay, so now we're going to test uh, for uh, noise in the current uh, mode of the load. To ensure the noise is in 
coming entirely from the load. For a source, I'm using a lithium ion battery, which should generate uh, no uh, correlated noise and very low level uncorrelated noise on its own. So the battery is going directly into the load and then I'm monitoring the load with both the Tektronics and the passive current probe. The Tektronics current probe is the green trace at 200 milliamps per division. The blue trace is the passive current probe at 20 milliamps per division. And I have the load set for one amp and it's hooked up to a lithium ion battery. So let me turn it on. So the noise we're seeing is actually uh, coming from the electronic load. Let me slow it down. There slow the trace down so you can see that there's big spikes once in a while and a lot of little spikes and those are probably all due to the switching supply in the load coupling into the current okay the load still connected to the lithium-ion battery and drawing one amp and we're looking at the current noise let's look at the FFT of the noise Okay, so this is an FFT from uh, DC to 200 kilohertz at uh, 20 kilohertz per division. And so we can see that the peak of the noise peaks are at around 25 kilohertz, 27 kilohertz, with lots of subharmonics. This is definitely switching power supply noise. Okay, the current slew rates can be set for turn on, turn off, and transient test. The same slew rate range is available for the transient test mode, turn on, and turn off, and all of the rate settings are independent. The settable range is uh, 0.6 amps per microsecond to uh, 600 microamps per microsecond. However, the usable range is a bit smaller um, because it won't quite get to the fastest ra uh, slew rates. And the actual uh, slew rates are even, uh, are actually a bit faster than the settings. So they don't match perfectly, but they do, uh, but they do work. So let's look at the transient mode. So this is a, a, an actual transient waveform from from the uh, unit now when you set it you can set uh the 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 low level and the high level and it, the low level doesn't need to be zero you can slew between any two currents um and you can set the uh, slew rates down here and the widths now the slew rate is sh should be the rate that this rises at the width is the width B is up here, width A is down here, and this is the f the fall rate. Now the frequency is going to depend on the rate and the the change in current because this time here is delta I divided by the rate, and so the frequency is going to be dependent on all these settings. So this is a faster. Uh, waveform and um, here and you can see that it's uh, uh, slewing a bit faster than the settings and I have it set at uh, uh, 20 uh, milliamps per microsecond now this is at 50 milliamps per microsecond now at 100 milliamps per microsecond it's even faster. This is both rise and fall rates. Now at 200 milliamps per microsecond, it's run into some sort of limit because I can set it to 600 milliamps per microsecond and it doesn't get any faster. So that's why the, you know, it doesn't quite get to the full settable range. 
And then when you're using it in this transient mode, it displays these volt, this voltage and current here, but these are not active during the transient mode. It just appears to just be the last voltage and current from when you went into transient mode. I'm not sure why they're displayed. So there's a current turn-on anomaly. The current turn-on anomaly occurs when current is being ramped up and first turned on. When any load mode starts and at the start of the first cycle of, any tr of a transient test. It only occurs on start, shutdowns behave as expected, and the transient mode works fine after the start of the first cycle. It manifests itself as a delayed start with an initial fast rise time or as a step start. And I've not observed any current peaks during the turn-ons or turn-offs. This does not seem like a big issue, but it's one, but one should be aware of it. So here's a transient startup waveform, and you can see here, it looks like it should have start, started down here, but it had a delayed turn on and then a fast rise time to catch up. And then this, the uh, subsequent one is fine, and everything after the startup is fine. So this is just a current turn-on anomaly. Here I have it set for 600 milliamps per microsecond, which is the fastest setting you can get. And you can see it comes up and then there's a little glitch and it comes up over here. So you can see uh, this is just above an amp. So now if we go here to here where I have it set to 3.5 amps and... Uh, this is the slowest setting. You can see it's it, just like the transient mode. It looks like it should have turned on over here, but it turned on here and slewed up quickly to this value and then continued up the, the, the slew rate it should have been on. And here's a low current one where I have it set for 380 milliamps. And here you can see the step mode where it comes up and sits at this value and then comes up some more and then gets to the final value. The ability to save data to the USB drive is one of the best features of this load. Data can be saved to the USB drive anytime the load is enabled. It saves the voltage and current readings plus a timestamp per line in a CSV file. The sampling rate is variable in 100 millisecond steps from 10 samples a second to one sample every 10 seconds. The data rate is set in the system setup menu. BMP screenshots can be saved any time the data save mode is not active. I have issues with the timestamps in the data format in the CSV files. However, the data is still incredibly useful as is, and I will detail my concerns in part three of this review. One of the best features of this byte load is its ability to save screenshots or write data to the USB drive. Anytime it's not writing data, you can hit the Save button and choose Picture, and it will write a BMP image of the screen to the uh, USB drive. Now, if you want to save data, you first have to set up the save uh, interval, and you do that by going to Set, System Setup, and then you have to scroll to Acquisition Frequency, and uh, there's a bug in the firmware that doesn't let you get there with the knob, but you, so you come up above, select the arrow, and now this number here is how often it writes data to the USB drive in tenths of a second. So right now it's set for one, which is every tenth of a second it'll write the voltage and current to the USB drive, and you can go as high as every ten seconds by entering a hundred. I'm going to put it back on one tenth. And now we'll scroll back here. And so I have this hooked to a power supply. And um, I want to save data in current set mode. So first you have to go into the mode you want to save data in. And then you hit save in data. And this save light will start flashing. When that 
SafeLight is flashing, it's ready to save data. And as soon as you hit the start button, it will write data to the USB drive at every tenth of a second, because that's what I have set. So I can turn it on. And uh, here now I can change the voltage on the power supply. I could change the current setting here and it should record all this to the USB drive. When I stop it, the file's still open and it's, uh, but, uh, it's not recording, but when I turn it back on, it will continue to record from that point and turn it off. And then when I hit uh, the save button again here, it's now closed the file on the USB drive. You can also save data when you do battery tests, and this is a very useful mode. Now there's two modes you can do battery tests in, constant resistance or constant current. Now you can, there, during the battery test, you can have a display screen which will plot the change in voltage during the discharge, and you can set how often that's done and again, that that setting is done here in the battery test mode. And that setting does not need to be the same as the one when you're writing data to the USB drive. It can be different. Now, the number of points on the graph or in a USB file is limited to 2 to the 16th, which to me is not much of a limit. That's way more data than I want to crunch for any one discharge curve. Now, there's also, in the constant current mode, you can actually discharge in three steps. If you set both the current and the voltage to zero, that step is ignored. So here I only have one step. But if you do use multiple steps, the end voltages from each sub subsequent step must decrease. So now we're going to set up this uh, Harbor Freight zinc chloride battery to uh, discharge in constant resistance mode. Um, and I want to record the data. So the first thing I'm going to do is insert a USB drive. And it's showing that I am have the USB drive in. Uh, now I'm going to... Uh, Set the re record interval uh, for, um, let's say, five seconds. So it will record data to the USB drive every five seconds. Now we'll go into battery mode, go back. I'll pick constant resistance. And let's... Uh, Go with uh, 15 ohms. And we'll end it at 0.5 volts. Okay, and this curve frequency is how fast it updates on the graph. Um, it doesn't have to be the same as when I write to the USB stick, but let's make it the same. And now. Uh, we're at the test, and uh, it's ready to start. So I'm going to start the test. Wait, stop. I forgot to turn on the... I need to first turn on the record function. So now it's recording data to the USB stick. And now I will start the test. Okay, if I hit this form button, it will show the discharge graph. If I come back, if I go back, it will uh, come back. And now just let it run. So this is the uh, discharge graph from that 15 ohm constant resistance discharge. It took uh, almost 14 hours to discharge the battery, 
with the 15 ohm resistor and um the capacity came or came up to about uh, 900 milliamp hours now here's another battery where instead of using constant resistance i used a 250 milliamp constant current discharge on the same type of battery and the current capacity is just about 700 milliamp hours for this one a bit lower but i discharged it harder and faster and last here's a panasonic end loop battery i um used uh in the battery uh, mode and so here you can see the voltage discharge i had it ended at 0.95 volts and i did a discharge at 100 milliamps and it lasted not, almost 20 hours it had almost two amp hours of capacity which is right what the battery is supposed to have and it took 19 hours to discharge and this is this the on-screen display of the discharge voltage down here now when you first turn it on it displays this number here and i think that's a measure of the internal resistance of the battery but it doesn't say anything in the manual about that and uh, i'm probably going to have to email uh, bytes and ask them about that anyway this is the end of the, this part of the review i hope you enjoyed it if you like this video please give it a thumbs up please subscribe if you want to see more videos from me and click on the notification uh, bell to be notified when I post parts two and three of this video. Anyway, thank you for watching.